In this video, you'll use Spring Boot to create an application that will call a RESTful web service and consume the response. Stick around until the end of the video and you'll learn how to configure the URL of a web service in your application.properties file instead of hard coding it in your application. We'll use IntelliJ Community Edition to build our application. But first, we need to generate our Spring Boot application using Spring Initializer. Let's open a browser and go to start.spring.io and here we'll configure our application. We'll use Maven to build our project. Java is our language in version 3.0.1 of Spring Boot. Let's change our project information. Our group will be com.beginsecure and our artifact will be board. A strange name I know, but keep watching. This will make sense later in the video. And we'll change the description to say board app. We'll package it as a jar and use Java 17. Now let's add our dependencies. All we need for this project is Spring Web. And let's click Generate. Our project code is generated. Let's open the zip file and select Show in Folder. And then Extract All. It will browse to the Projects folder and select it. And extract our board project there. OK, looks good. Now let's open IntelliJ IDEA. We're using Community Edition, the free version. Let's select Open, and then Projects, and the Board folder to open our project. We'll get a warning asking us if we want to trust and open this project. Because we just generated the code and we know where it came from, we can trust the project and go ahead and open it. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see a video that explores the use of preview and safe mode for opening a project and what the limitations are. For now, we'll click Trust Project, and IntelliJ opens our project, scans the files, and downloads the dependencies. I'll speed things up so we get through the truly boring part quickly. Notice the message that says Spring Boot Maven Plugin version 3.0.1 is unresolved. Let's fix that. We'll open Maven, and then click Reload, and that fixed it. Let's go look at our project application code that was generated. I always like to run the generated code after I load it to make sure there are no problems, so let's do that now. We'll click the green arrow in the gutter and select Run the main method of the board application class. The code's compiled and starts up. I don't see any errors or exceptions, so it looks like we're all good. Let's stop the application now by clicking the red stop button in the run window. To consume a RESTful service, we'll need an endpoint to hit. And while we're at it, let's make it something interesting, but not complicated. I found this site called boardapi.com. So now you understand why I named the application board app. If we go to boardapi.com slash API slash activity, it will serve us up an interesting activity to do to prevent boredom. Looking at the results we get back, the first activity suggested is start a collection. What I like about this API for our example is it's public, it's not metered, but be nice and don't overwhelm the site with traffic. It doesn't require us to authenticate or provide a bearer token and it returns a nice flat JSON object, which is easy to parse for this example. So it's a good learning example and I hope it's still available when you're watching this video. If for some reason it's broken or no longer available, this video is still a great introduction to consuming a REST service, so please continue watching. Now that we know what endpoint we want to access, let's write a Java object that we use to store the results of the REST call. Let's go back to IntelliJ to keep the API call visible so we can write our POJO to match the fields of the JSON and results. We'll create a new package called com.beginsecure.board.model and we'll create a class called activity to hold our REST call result. Let's walk through the board API result and match the data fields we create to be of the appropriate type and name. First is activity, which will be a string. Next is type, which is also a string. Participants indicate how many people will participate in an activity. This will be a whole number, so an integer is fine here. Next is price. Although our result for this call is zero, Reading the documentation on the board API site, I noticed that we can get a fractional result back. So we should use a string here to manage the result, rather than a float or a double, which is notorious for rounding errors, 
depending on how the data will be used. Link is a potential web resource that we can use to find out more about the activity, so that will be a string. Key is some kind of internal ID for activities. We'll treat it as a string since the value could be large and exceed the range for an int or even a long. Accessibility is a factor used to indicate how difficult an event is to perform. It's a number between 0 and 1. Since it's a fractional number, we'll again want to use a string to manage it in our POJO. Now let's generate some code. We really don't need to generate a noArgument constructor since it will be synthesized for us, but I always find it disturbing not to see a noArg constructor in a class, so let's go ahead and create one. And we'll create getters and setters for all the fields. And finally, we'll override the toString method. We'll need this to log our result in the code that we write. And we're done with the activity class. Notice it's just an ordinary POJO, nothing special about it. Spring Boot will use the default Jackson JSON parser to parse the REST result and store it in an object of this class type. Because the field names of our class match the names of the elements in the JSON object that's returned, there's no need to do an explicit mapping using annotations, though that could be easily done. Now let's go back to the board application class. First, let's add a logger. We'll need the logger to write out any messages and to log the JSON object we get back from our call to the board API. We'll use the SLF4J or Simple Logging Facade for Java Framework. It's an abstraction for various frameworks such as Log4J, Logback, or Java Util Logging. By default, because we're using the starters for this project, Logback will be used for logging. A quick message about secure coding. Some best practices for logging include don't log sensitive information such as credentials, keys, tokens, credit card information, national ID numbers, like the social security number here in the US, but also be careful about logging names, addresses, and other personal information that can violate regulations in some countries. And we'll be using the logger factory to construct our logger. In the main method, let's go ahead and use the logger. We'll call the info method and insert a message into our log that says in main method. The Spring Boot application annotation on our class extends the configuration annotation and thus allows us to add a lot of configuration to this class. We could add our Spring Bean configuration code in another class, but for this simple application, we'll add the configuration code here and annotate what we create with that bean. Once a method annotated with that bean executes and returns, the object lives until the end of the application. First, we'll create a REST template bean. It will use the Jackson JSON library to parse the incoming data from our REST API call. The REST template builder is a class that allows us to configure our REST template and customize the behavior. For our code, we'll simply return our builder after making a call to the build method and using the default behavior. We'll add the bean annotation to add the REST template object that we just created to the application context. Next, we'll create a command runner and implement the run method. It will use our REST template to call the board API. Command line runner is an interface which is annotated with the add functional interface and has a single method called run. This means rather than creating a new class, we can just create a new method, implement the run method, and annotate it with that bean so Spring will find it. We'll return the results using the arrow operator and create our lambda expression in braces. We'll create an object called activity of type activity, which we created earlier. And we'll call the rest template object and use the get for object method. This method performs a get request, parses the result, and returns to us an object of the type we specify. Our arguments that we pass to the method will first be empty quotes, where we'll put the URL in just a moment, and then the name of the class that will be used as the return value. Let's go back to the board API site and copy the URL and paste it into our call to get for object. Of course, hard coding a URL like this is super ugly, but we'll fix it later in this video. Finally, let's use our logger to write out the activity object by invoking the toString method. Keep in mind that this code does no error checking, so this is definitely not production ready code. Finally, we'll annotate our method with that bean, and we're done coding. In the gutter, let's start our application by running the main method of the board application class once again. 
freezing the log on startup, we see our message in main method that we added. Once our app fully starts up, we can see our activity object logged in the last line. If we scroll over, we can read the suggested activity, learn how to use an Arduino. And there's a link to find out more about an Arduino. Let's stop the running application and close the run window. We'll clean up the code a bit. Let's get rid of the hard-coded URL for the board API. We'll move it to our application.properties file where it belongs. Let's copy it from our run method and open up the application.properties file. There's nothing there now. We'll add a simple key value pair here. Our key will be called api.url, and we'll set that equal to the URL for the board API endpoint that we just copied. Now let's copy the key value and go back to the board application class. We'll add a class level field called API URL of type string, and we'll annotate it with add value. The add value annotation is used to assign values to variables and method arguments. And we'll use it to assign a value from the spring environment. In quotes, the notation is dollar sign, curly braces, and the name of the property we're assigning it. In this case, the API.URL key we set in application.properties. When our code runs, the API URL variable will be assigned to the value from the application.properties file. Now let's use the variable in our code. We'll go back to the run method and get rid of the hard-coded URL and paste in the API URL variable. Done with coding, let's run the app once again. Everything works fine and we get our new result from our call to the board API. Let's see what this suggestion is this time. Configure two-factor authentication on your accounts. What a great security tip, and I promise I didn't plan it that way. All right, that's it for now. If you found this video useful, please subscribe to get notified when new content is released. Thanks for watching, and remember to always begin secure.